Well, I did it. <laughs> I completed my 60 day Linux challenge. I also completed my 60 videos in 60 days. Today is the 60th video sharing my Linux journey with you. And I've got some things to share. And at the end, you'll, you'll hear, am I gonna keep using Linux or am I gonna move back to Mac? This has been a wild ride for sure. When I started this, I was like, eh, it's no big deal. It's gonna be easy. You're gonna be able to do it. It's no big deal. And in most part, that is pretty true. But when you change the way you do life, <laughs> especially if you work on a computer regularly, it's, it's more than just a little adjustment, a little UI adjustment, you know? My goal for this challenge was to learn Linux. I wanted to see if it met my needs. Uh, I wanted to get comfortable. I wanted to really get in it and learn it. It had been 15 years since I had used Linux before and I wanted to see where it was going. I also was getting frustrated with some things with Mac OS. I definitely wasn't fond of what was happening with Microsoft Windows. Uh, once again, obviously they have their wonderful places in the history of using computers. So, you know, don't misunderstand me. But for me personally, there were some things that were bugging me. So I decided to explore Linux again. And I decided that I was gonna do a challenge, that I was gonna use it for 60 days straight. You probably have seen the Linus Tech Tips Linux gaming challenge. And I was like, man, that looks like fun. And I think they did it. I don't remember how long they did it, but they didn't do it for 60 days. And I thought that was fascinating. I was like, well, why don't I try that? You know, I've been looking into this. I also don't wanna spend three plus thousand dollars on a brand new Mac laptop. Let's let's see if we can get something to work for us. And I decided I was gonna do it. And a part of this challenge was I needed to use Linux anytime I was going to use a computer for anything outside of my day job. I would make sure that I did it on my Dell G15 laptop. And I, I didn't want to just do it just exactly like I normally would because about 85% of that use would just be on a web browser and I'd be like, how am I actually gonna learn Linux doing that? So I figured starting a YouTube channel and sharing what I'm learning would be a good vehicle to ensure that I'm regularly had to use the laptop for more than just web browsing. I would need to video edit, I would need to produce and, and use graphic programs and use uh, office programs and use email and all of these things. I figured it was gonna give me an opportunity to learn and force me to learn daily working in the operating system. You really can't judge something without truly spending time in it. It also meant I needed to record and capture my experience with Linux, not just on my phone. I couldn't use equipment at work. So what I mean by that is, I decided to capture what was happening on OBS and record it directly onto Linux. It wouldn't be some external piece of gear. And I also decided I couldn't use any equipment from work. I could only use what I had at home. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about Linux. Before I even started recording and experiencing that, I had kind of did some test things. I spent a lot of time in virtual machines and deciding what distribution to use and seeing how to format uh, the video so that it would have some value for other people to use, not just for me looking and seeing how this worked. 60 videos in 60 days to go along with this 60 day Linux challenge. That in and of itself, just switching to a new operating system should have been enough for a sane person. But I decided I'm gonna do 60 videos and post them on YouTube. <laughs> My day job is multimedia production. An orchestra, it's entire. Why did I allow this? Hi. And this. Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. And, and this. Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. To happen. I decided I had to start somewhere. I couldn't have any excuses. I couldn't wait for good gear. I couldn't wait till I got really comfortable with the video editing program and really comfortable with the audio editing program and got really comfortable with the operating system. I decided 
I'm just gonna go and learn with it. I just had to accept the production level because I didn't have weeks to produce something. When I produce something at work, we have a lot of times a fair amount of time to get it right. If we need to re-record, we can. That's not what I had the time for. It is what it is. But what I did see is that every video, there has been some sort of improvement. Whether it's the workflow on my back end, using Linux more efficiently, or the quality that you guys see on your end. Is it the most amazing quality video? No. Is it doing the job? Yeah, it's working good. Like I said, I was not only learning Linux, I was learning video editing on new software, trying to connect my iPhone to our OBS, which by the way, the first three or four videos of this 60 videos, there was a lot of frame skipping. For some reason, I would set up my phone and connect it to OBS through DroidCam, which I thought was a cool technology that they had available. It would only connect wirelessly at the resolution that I wanted. You could connect it through USB, but it was going to be a like, not a good resolution, okay? <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I'll use it that way. Although it worked, there was a lot of frame skipping and it was very annoying. <laughs> So I decided to move to a webcam. You know, my plan was to just share what I'm experiencing and learning, what I'm checking out as far as distributions, applications, and see what's great and what's not. I figured anyone who is considering to check out Linux would like to see what others experience. And YouTube is a great platform for that. I've had people help correct me and guide me in the comments section on these YouTube videos. I've also had an opportunity to help others. That's a start of a wonderful community. That is awesome. Here are some numbers that support the value of sharing my Linux journey with everyone. There are 60 videos now out there for others to learn from. We've walked through uh, 25 unique Linux distributions and one BSD that highlight the unique, vast, and wonderful landscape of open source operating systems. We've seen one billion bad dance moves. <laughs> and an infinite number of times, I use the term pieces. Pieces, 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 pieces. It's like trying to count the grains of sand on a beach. I don't know why I kept using the word pieces. Pieces, 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 pieces. I kept trying to find ways to make sure I connect with new Linux users because that's what I feel like I am. Am I still a new Linux user? Yes, I am. However, I would consider myself more experienced. I have some wear on the tread of my tires, if you will. I'm definitely way further ahead than I was 60 days ago. If I didn't use this challenge, I wouldn't be as far along in my Linux journey that I am now because there would be days where I would just check something out on a web browser or answer an email and that would have been it and that, that's fine but I really want to learn I really want to grow in this and really see if it was for me what did I learn doing the 60-day Linux challenge Linux is more than an operating system it's a movement it's a community the code itself is communal people take the code and improve upon it they make it better, they change it, they add to it. it. It's an amazing communal thing. There also is the community, the people that work with it itself. Linux is fully capable to be what I use for home use. And I hope to see open source grow well beyond where it is right now. Truth is, I will not be able to put Linux on my devices at work. Things like Dante and specific audio and video plugins are too vital for me to be able to use Linux there. On the positive note, I learned that I don't need Photoshop. <laughs> Thanks, Gimp. I also learned that Linux can seriously game. I started gaming again, and I hadn't done that in years. I learned that I truly love Linux. I've expressed this in earlier videos before. This is the first time that I've fallen in love with an operating system that doesn't normally happen. An operating system is really just supposed to serve whatever application or use you want to use your computer for. It really should be kind of out of the way. And Linux is, don't misunderstand me, but the way that it gets out of the way is awesome. Will I continue and keep using Linux? Am I gonna keep using it? Am I gonna keep 
using Linux? Absolutely yes. Absolutely. This thing is cool, guys. This thing is cool. It's fun. It's interesting. It's ever-changing and morphing. There's so much to explore and learn that I haven't even scratched the surface of what Linux has to offer. Am I going to keep creating video content on YouTube? Absolutely. Uh, this has been a part of the experience for me, a part of my learning experience, a part of my growing experience. You know, I figured, you know, I'm only two months in on editing videos on Linux. What is it going to be like when I'm a year down the road, two years down the road? What am I going to learn? I don't think I'm going to stop making videos. I'm enjoying it. And, and I hope you guys are getting some value in your day by watching some of these videos. Now, what I did learn is I had a lot of videos planned for me to do on the 60 day videos for this Linux journey, the 60 day Linux challenge. And some of them just couldn't be done within the time frame that I had currently. But who knows, really soon I might be able to produce some of those videos, some of, some of those video ideas that I have. And I hope I can, because I think they're gonna be so much fun and have value for learning experiences and for all of us to grow in Linux. So I'm hoping to, to structure my life in a way where I can do that. Am I going to be producing a video a day? I'm going to try. But if I take a go at one of these videos that's going to take more production time, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the production time and I'm going to make that video happen. I do think continuing to share where I'm at in my journey is going to be fun. The entertainment factor is is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. The fact that I'm having a great time editing video and I'm doing it because I love doing it and I love learning a new thing about Linux. I started learning how to use grep in the terminal. I hadn't used it yet and I just started using it a couple days ago. Where was I? <laughs> I thought that was a cool way to use the terminal to find what's going on in your system. That's cool. I'm learning about new video editors and new audio editors. And there's way too many audio plugins for me to go to through that are open source and for me to learn if they're gonna work for me. I just found out yesterday, like the rest of y'all, that NVIDIA is allowing for their graphics driver to be open source. That's a big deal for a lot of people. That's cool. What does that mean for Linux coming up? I'm also gonna look at trying to get the low latency kernel put on my system for audio recording specifically. I'm noticing some latency. And even within these videos, some of you guys had commented on my first couple videos, the audio sync wasn't right. And I am about eight milliseconds off from my audio recording and my video. And I'm wondering if a low latency kernel is gonna help. I've got a lot to learn still. And if you are still wanting to learn about Linux, hopefully you can keep joining with me and hopefully five to seven times a week <laughs> where we can just walk through together and help each other as we grow and learn this wonderful operating system, Linux. This has been fun. This has been interesting. There have been times of challenges. If I've got life going on, I had life going on here, I would have to record two or three videos at a time and then edit them and have them ready to go because I wouldn't be able to record another time or edit another time. That's okay, that's okay. This is how you overcome in life. If you make a commitment, you commit. You commit to life goals and you try to do what you can to achieve them. And if you fail, you take the information from that failure and you allow that to be a stepping stone of what you learn from that failure to become something even better, to make that goal something that you can crush even easier. And to say that this 60 days was flawless, <laughs> Nothing could be further from the truth. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being a part of this journey with me. Thanks for continuing to join with me on this Linux journey. I think this is gonna be a fun ride. I can't wait to see what this community looks like a year, five years, 10 years from now. Who knows? Let's do this together. This will be fun. If you've been in Linux for 20 plus years, Thanks for supporting what's happening here. Hopefully we've sparked some things for you and thank you for uh, helping guide us newbies. For those of you who are new or considering doing Linux, all I can tell you is, is that it's worth it.
It is worth it to learn about open source. It is worth it to learn about how your operating system uses your hardware. It is worth it to learn applications that are new to you, and I am a better person for it. And I think all the people that watch this might feel the same way. I'm not saying there aren't struggles, I'm not saying there aren't challenges, I'm not ignoring those challenges. Thanks, guys. This has been fun. I'll see you tomorrow.